More with Rosemary Orchard on Apple's Shortcuts. This is Mac Voices. Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by ZocDoc. Find doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. Download the free ZocDoc app at ZocDoc.com slash Mac Voices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. This is the second part of our conversation with Rosemary Orchard, the author of Take Control of Shortcuts from Take Control Books. Rosemary gives us some more examples about what you can do with shortcuts and why you want to do them, and a whole lot more. Let's go back and let Rosemary do the talking. Um, you, you kind of skipped over there something else that I was kind of curious about. How do you feel about uh, third-party developers and how they're adopting shortcuts and how they are taking advantage of it or helping us take advantage of shortcuts within their own apps? I think third-party developers are really seeing that shortcuts isn't just um, a thing that some nerds really like, uh, but that this is actually something that's very useful to lots of people and that Apple are going out of their way to make it easier for them as well. So something that Apple recently added was the ability to unify actions across apps. Um, so to go back uh, to OmniFocus and Things, which I mentioned before, OmniFocus has um, an iOS and iPad OS app, and then they've got the Mac app. Um, and then Things has an iPhone app, an iPad app, and a Mac app. Previously, each of these would require different actions. Okay, so then it, you would have to, uh, for the Things app, for example, what a lot of people did to work around this, they'd install the iPhone app on their iPad because then their shortcut would work in both places. But especially when the Mac came out, this this got a little bit dicey because then you'd have to say, okay, am I on a Mac? In which case, run this action. If I'm on an iPad, run that action. And if I'm on an iPhone, run this action. Not very friendly to the users and certain, and not very friendly to the developers either who are have to explaining, have to, having to explain to their users that Sorry, it's kind of just how this works. Um, And so Apple fixed that. Uh, And Apple have made it possible for those three separate apps, um, in some cases, to share the same same shortcuts actions. So that you can just have, you know, add this item to things or add this item to OmniFocus or run this OmniFocus automation. And it's the same across all your platforms. And I think that, amongst other things, was a bit of a signal to developers of, hey, you know, they've been pointing the bat signal over here. Uh, now there's fireworks going off. Um, and there's a whole crowd standing around going, woo, isn't this great? Um, you know, because us nerds can be pretty loud about this stuff when we want to be. Um, but, you know, it, it's really becoming more and more of a thing. So the Amazon app has shortcut sections. Um, you know, it's got uh, just a couple of actions for like viewing your orders, opening your shopping basket and so on. These aren't, you know, anything particularly nerdy or crazy, but the British Airways app, you know, uh, the the airline that I've got over here will add shortcuts actions for, you know, various things. And I'm seeing more and more app developers of, you know, mainstream apps adding uh, support for app shortcuts, which is the thing that I mentioned before, you know, a shortcut in in the list um, that you can just see and use without, you know, without doing anything, uh, without having to set anything up. And I think that this is really a, a great signal of the fact that this is for everybody. Of course, you've got apps like, uh, for example, Jira, which is a a, uh, a popular uh, sort of task and project management tool in software development, adding their own shortcuts actions, but they've gone really crazy where you can use a, a Jira query language to run a query and say, hey, like, get me all the tasks with like this actual code that I've written out. And so the fact that all of these third-party um, developers are adding the support it, it's truly amazing to see. And then, of course, some of them are going further and they're creating shortcut-specific tools. So that, for example, if you wanted to add logging into your shortcuts, well, there's an app called Logger for shortcuts, um, which allows you to log all of this so that, you know, if you have lots of automations running, for example, then you can see, you know, this ran at this time and this ran at this time and this ran at this time if you if you want to do that or if you're writing something nice and big and complex then you've got that logging to help you out um and it, it, it's really great to see all of this stuff coming and obviously i'm in a world where uh you know i look for apps with shortcut support but the number of times i'll download an app and go oh hey this has got shortcut support isn't that great um has significantly increased over the last year to 18 months 
It's it's one more reason people need to pay attention to shortcuts. And I, I love the way you pulled the focus mode uh, discussion in too, um, because there are things that Apple seems to be doing internally with shortcuts powering it. And they're, they're building new features based on shortcuts that maybe you could build anyway, but you know, who wants yeah. to, and by standardizing it, 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 I mean, not only do you explore shortcuts in a different way, but you also get the added bonus of having a new feature or two. Well, that's just it. You know, like it, it wasn't just, uh, for example, changing your watch face. You could also change your home screen and lock screen background. Well, Apple went way over that on, uh, this year, and they didn't just add like, oh yeah, like you can set your home screen and uh, lock screen wallpaper. They've got like the combinations of the two with your different widgets and selecting which um, pages of your home screen you want available in a focus mode. That That is Apple really going, okay, we're listening to users here. We're using all the power that Shortcuts gives us. Let, let's go for this. Let's do this. We're going all out here. Uh, and I, I really appreciate that. Um, you know, I also like the fact that um, they, they've also clearly been listening because one of my uh, desperately asked for features, which is opt things out of my focus mode rather than having to opt things in so that I don't automatically exclude everything. I just exclude like the three apps that I really don't want notifying me when I'm in this mode or whatever. Um, you know, they, they've also listened and gone, okay, well, hang on a minute. If she's got a work Mac and she's got a personal Mac, does she want to filter mail on her personal app while she's working? Like on my work Mac, well, I only have one mail uh, account over there. But on my personal Mac, I've got other mail accounts. I don't actually want those filtered. And so they've not synced them. And this is why we have a shortcut section for every focus mode filter um, so that you can set your focus mode. So what you can do if you want to is you can set your focus mode filter using a shortcut, and then you can open that same shortcut on another device and run it there too. Um, and that means that you can sync them, but it's not an entirely automatic sync, it's a manual sync. So if I just want to set up my focus mode filters for, uh, for example, mail, notes, and reminders on my iPhone and my iPad, I can do that. But if I want to filter drafts on my work Mac and my personal Mac, well, I can do that, but I don't have to filter drafts on my iPhone and my iPad. And I think that that's really good that, you know, Apple have been listening to to their users and, and clearly getting feedback and seeing, okay, what do people use shortcuts for already? And how can we take this and make it even more awesome? And secondly, how can we make this a really nice usable feature for people, giving them lots of power without accidentally taking away all of their notifications and making them wonder what's going wrong? <laughs> Now, about the last 90 to 120 seconds, somebody's going to have to go back and diagram that example. But I, I understood it completely because I, too, work on multiple Macs. And mm. it's surprising how often you don't, you know, in some cases, you want things to happen across the board. In other yes. cases, you just want this to happen over here and this to happen over here. And so yeah. th that that's really exciting to me because it means somebody is paying attention to way that you work, that I work, and a lot of our friends work. Yes, yes. And for anybody who's going, wait, I, I don't understand why I wouldn't want this to sync. Well, say, for example, you have a personal iPhone um, and you have a work iPad. Okay. If you set your personal iPhone up to do some things and filter, um, say, for example, um, your notes and so on, um, and you've got your personal account and your work account on there, and on your iPad, you've only got work accounts, it's probably going to break, right? Because it doesn't necessarily know what's personal and what's work. But this way, by the fact that it doesn't sync um, and it doesn't do that, and you have to go and set you know those things up again, at least as far as you you can, where you just you know maybe filter for uh, all of the things that are not in the personal notes folder that you put on your iPad for just anything that crops up that you need, then you are very explicitly saying, okay, this is what I need to happen here but you don't have exactly the same things in both places. Your iPhone isn't just the other side of the iPad. You know, there's a Venn diagram with, with areas where that information overlaps. Um, but, you know, there, there's those edges off to one side, the Mickey ears, as I call them, um, where, where things don't quite overlap. Um, and, you know, there's, oh, they're only on the iPhone or they're only on the iPad. So it's really nice that they, they've thought about that and the fact that the way that people use different devices can be different. 
Rosemary, I will never be able to look at a Venn diagram again without thinking of you and Mickey ears. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. I used to work for Disney. It bleeds into all sorts of things. So that's why. <laughs> Once Disney, always Disney, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, um, what else is in the book that we should know about? Um, because you know, this is the second edition, so it was a, a revision to the first edition. Mm -hmm. And also, what are some of the updates that we can expect to see coming from you as the next update to the book comes out? Well, what I've already done is I've gone through and I've pretty much dumbled the number of examples of shortcuts that you can build and download um, from the book. Uh, so every shortcut example in the book that I, I've made, um, there's also a download link where you can then actually download this um, to, to use it yourself. Um, which I think is very important because I know lots of people, they're very willing to follow along and, you know, create something. Um, but it's, if, if you get a little bit stuck, it's nice just being able to go, you know what, Rose already did all her work. I'm just going to take what she's done and download it and look at it and figure it out. And then I can, you know, learn from that. So I've made a point of, of doing that, um, which is, is uh, I think, very useful. I've also significantly increased the number of uh, utility apps that I've talked about in the book. Um, so utility apps are apps that don't entirely necessarily, but exist in a way to support shortcuts. Um, so they will give you more actions that you can use um, to, to make things better. So for example, if you want to check which speaker is being used, you know, is it is it your AirPods that are being used? Is it CarPlay that's being used? Um, or is it uh, the speaker that's built into your iPhone? Well, then there's a great app called Toolbox Pro for that. So I talk about the different apps like that and how they can help you in the book. And so I've increased the number of those because first of all, there are more of them. And secondly, I've had more time to play with some of these and test them out. Uh, there were some that didn't make the cut, I have to say. Uh, you know, there are some where I looked at it and went, I get, I get it, I get how it works. But this doesn't feel very user friendly, so I, I left those ones out of the book because I, I didn't think the folks would really want, you know, go go get a degree in computer science and then download this app and then it'll let you do these things. That just didn't seem like a very friendly thing to say to folks. So, uh, so I, I left some of those out. Um, but with sixteen point one iOS 16.1. Apple haven't just uh, given us a couple of new software features. They've also, in in the meantime, uh, given us uh, this Apple Watch Ultra. Um, which has something on the side of it. It's got a little orange button, uh, which is a little difficult to see on screen, but there's there's an orange button. I'd say little. Uh, it, it's like the size of my old Apple Watch, uh, which was the little one. But, uh, you know, this is a special button because it's an intense button, which means that you can program it to run a shortcut when you press it. Um, and of course, you know, you can, you can set this up in the watch app and it just gives you one shortcut. Um, and that's kind of it. Uh, so I've been exploring numerous different ways that you can take advantage of this single button that theoretically does one thing and it can figure out where you are, what your focus mode is, what the time of day is, what's on your calendar and give you all sorts of different options. You know, you could say if it's raining, well, I want you to do this if I'm out running um, and I press that button. But if it's sunny, when I press that button, I want you to do something different. Um, and so I've been working on several different ways to pull in all of that data as well as some of the features that Apple shipped with uh, the uh, later versions of iOS 16 and 16.1. Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by ZocDoc. Find local doctors who take your insurance at ZocDoc.com slash Mac Voices. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. That probably shouldn't be so hard, should it? But available when you need them, not when it suits their schedule? who take your insurance, not the ones they prefer, and patient-reviewed to be sure you're getting what you think you're getting? What a concept. Yes, what a concept. ZocDoc's mobile app is as easy as ordering a ride to a restaurant or getting delivery to your house. Search, find, and book doctors with a few taps. Whatever specialty you need, ZocDoc can help find the doctor who is right for you. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc. You should be one of them. Go to ZocDoc.com slash MacVoices and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc, Z-O-C-D-O-C dot -O com slash MacVoices. ZocDoc.com slash MacVoices. Thanks to ZocDoc for their support of MacVoices. So there's a lot here. 
There's yeah. there's no question about it. it. Whether you're new to shortcuts or whether oh, yeah. you feel like you're an old hand, um, mm-hmm. this is this is a book that you definitely need to take full advantage. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, I love some of the examples you gave, Rosemary, because I th- I feel like they are real world approachable examples, and and that's that's something that every time I talk to people about shortcuts. Uh, occasionally the eyes glaze over a little bit, mm-hmm. sort of the way they used to do with Apple Script, um, and, you know, and um, and Automator even. Um, and so, you know, it's it's we need to teach people that this is something that you can do, and and a you can do it, and b it will be honest to God really useful to you. Yes, yeah. I mean, one of the things that as some folks say to me is, "Oh, I'm not really sure that I need this," and I ask them, "Okay, but well, do you have any HomeKit devices?" HomeKit devices, yeah. Do you have any HomeKit devices? Oh, yeah. Well, I've got a couple of light bulbs and switch. Okay. So do you want them to do be able to like check something other than just if people are at home or it's dark outside before they do something? Oh, yeah. Actually, you know, I, I, I want the kitchen lights to come on um, at sunset if the garage door is open, for example. Um, or if I get home um, and uh, I'm the only person at home. Um, or, you know, and, and things like that. Well, if you scroll all the way to the bottom of an automation when you create it in the Home app, or if you, you open the Automations tab on in Shortcuts and, and you go to Create a New Automation, then there's a shortcut option where you can actually create it as a shortcut and you can get what the weather's like today um, and various other things, and you can pull that data in, and that's using shortcuts. Um, and that's that's right there in the shortcuts app or in the home app. You, they're they're in both places. It's it's exactly the same uh, for anybody who's going. Oh, I think I've seen this in the home app. Um, you know, I didn't know it was in shortcuts. Are they are they different? No, no, no. They're the same. Don't worry. Um, but you know, the fact that you can do that means that you can do some some great logic in there. You know, I've I've set up my parents' place so if I go and stay over. Usually, what happens in the morning when they open the blinds? It opens all of the blinds um, automatically. But if I'm sleeping over, it doesn't open the blind in my room <laughs> so that I don't get woken up by the blind going up and being blasted by sunlight shining into my eyes. Ah! Uh, you know, it's not, not a great way to wake up in the morning if you're not ready to wake up yet. Uh, or maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe, maybe my parents are just being really sneaky and trying to wake me up in the morning. I've ruined their alarm clock system now. Uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to ask them. But, you know, I've changed it so that that doesn't happen anymore. And that was something that was very easy to do in shortcuts. I would have been, you know, I would have had to create two automations to do that in the home app. Um, so I, I think that that was well worth doing. Um, and you can use shortcuts for so many things. And you can do amazing, complex, crazy things. Or you can have a button on your home screen that looks like Safari. And when you tap it, it doesn't open your last Safari tab. It opens a new tab with DuckDuckGo in it so that you go straight to a search. Because if you're like me, you open a Safari tab, there's what you were searching for last. And, oh, right. Yeah. And that was the thing. And then you forget all about the new thing that you're opening Safari for. So every time I open Safari, it opens a new tab. And that's something that's very simple. It's one action. Um, but th- that's it. Literally just one action to do. But it makes my life easier. And if something like that would make your life easier, well, why not try shortcuts? And and Rosemary didn't tell you that she also developed a shortcut that will turn all the lights on in her parents' house at two a.m. just to get back at them. Um, <laughs> no, no, I, I I didn't do that yet. Uh, they've yeah. not gone for smart lights upstairs. Uh, they've they've only got some smart uh, lamps downstairs. They're not they're not onto the smart lights bandwagon yet. But the smart blinds they were sold on that. So you know. Oh, that's that's interesting that yeah. they would. They would go for one, but not the other. I think it's because my dad uh, helped me install my smart blinds here uh, when I moved in. Uh, my parents, when I moved in, gave me a great housewarming gift. They gave me my dad for two weeks of decorating. Uh, they joked that they gave me that as a secondhand toolbox. Honestly, the best housewarming present ever because that, the toolbox I've been using like nonstop for the last couple of years as it is. And they're good tools as well. Um, but my dad's two weeks of decorating definitely paid off. You know, I, I, re- I really like my, my apartment and how it's decorated, but he got to see like the smart blinds and so on that I was installing um, as, as we did things together. And uh, he was very interested um, and then went out and immediately bought like three smart blinds for their place and installed them. Uh, and I don't know if he actually asked my mom before he did it, uh, but he's still alive. So, you know, clearly it, it's paid off. <laughs> I like this. Uh, we have a little family history going on here. This is great. This yeah, is great. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, it, it could have been worse. He could have uh, answered the phone and asked her, how if I, how would I know if I was dead? And she mm. could have said, well, you wouldn't be talking to me. And he could have responded with, what if I was in hell? Uh, which uh, he actually did one time after he accidentally electrocuted himself. So I don't recommend that. Uh, that didn't go down so well, but the smart blinds did. So if you're looking for, mm. for a Christmas present, uh, accidentally implying that you might be in hell if you're talking to your spouse, probably not great. Smart blinds, on the other hand, seem to go down a treat. <laughs> Is is your dad a, uh, a nerd, or uh, is he uh, one of those guys that can just put anything together and make it work? He he is definitely the latter category. He's a carpenter, joiner, plumber, and electrician by trade. Um, so he's you know building houses, that sort of thing. Um, he's not necessarily a nerd, but he likes to learn about technology and how it works. Um, so I think the smart blinds appealed to him in the fact that he wouldn't have to go around and open, you know, the blinds in every room, um, you know, in the morning and it can go up and down even if they're not at home. So when they're on holiday, it doesn't just look like the house is empty, uh, which I think is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. All those little things. And your, your example about the, the Safari button opening DuckDuckGo for a new search, uh, the smart blinds. I mean, they're all these little things that combined just, they do save you time. They make your life easier. Yeah. And it, it, yes, there has to be a little investment in creating them and maybe observing what you're doing and how you're doing it and when you do it and why you do it. But once you do that, it's like, yeah, okay. It, it's, it's a great toolbox because, you know, yeah. if you, once you start to learn, then well, I can I can use the screwdriver over here, and mm -hmm. I, and I can also use the screwdriver over there. Yeah, and it just yeah. cascades. So exactly, exactly. And sometimes you might look at something and go, "Oh, well, that's not a screw, so I guess I need a hammer." And you go and look in the shortcuts toolbox, and turns out there's one of those too. Yep. Yep. So take control of shortcuts um, is out now. It mm -hmm. is the second edition. Yeah. Um, it's available from Take Control Books, and of course, there is an update coming that Rosemary is working on right now, and will be out. You know, at, maybe by the time you see this, um, F I don't. Fingers crossed. I should be getting it back over to Joe, who's uh, doing my editing for me again. Thank you, Joe. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, and uh, yeah, and then hopefully, uh, fingers crossed. Depending on his schedule and everything else, and how much back and forth is needed, it, it will hopefully be out soon after then. So uh, I'm working hard on it. And uh, if anybody's got any requests of examples they'd like to see in the book, then they should feel free to get in touch with me. I'm quite happy to add uh, examples by request as well if you've got something that you'd like to see uh, added to the book. Okay, so you set me up for that. So what's the best way they can make those requests? Uh, well, uh, if you go to my website, it's got all the ways to to get in touch with me. Um, and if you've got a request for the book, uh, then I'd recommend just emailing it to contact at rosemaryorchards.com. Um, if you just put um, take control in, in the subject line somewhere, I will make sure that those get copied into a folder so that I can easily look back at them as I'm doing my writing. Um, but yeah, other than that, you can you can find me all over the internet, rosemaryorchard.com, rosemaryorchard on micro.blog and, and Twitter. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, I'm I'm podcasting on uh, the Twit Network, iOS Today, on Relay FM, uh, Automators, where if you want more shortcut support, uh, then both of those podcasts have shortcuts in them on a regular basis. Uh, if you want some productivity nerd time, then uh, this is the other podcast as well. Great. Rosemary, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for the time. We we can't let it be that much time in between. I don't know. We both get busy, and we just we have to block off some time and do it more often. Yes, but in the meantime, I do have a couple of gift suggestions for you, Chuck. So I don't know. Maybe we'll get to talk about those in the not too distant future. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. The only trouble you're like certain other people. You always cost me money. So. I'll consider that a compliment because I'm always on the lookout for really cool and interesting things. Yeah, well, I, I know you. You have them. You're, I'm, you're just holding them until, until you want to tell me to buy them. <laughs> Thanks so much. It's great to see you again. Well, thank you for having me, Chuck. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. If you haven't started with shortcuts, you need to. And the best way to do it is Rosemary's book. TakeControlBooks.com is where you can find it. You'll find me right back here on the next edition of Mac Voices. As always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. 
And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.